Moon sign in the houses. So we speak of the moon. We speak of the emotions. We speak of the mother. This is the nurturing mother energy. The moon is the two-tier feeling of something. It's very intuitive. It just knows through experience, through feelings. The moon did with the past. And from the past, the mother learned on the upside. But on the downside, the past can destroy you because so many memories. The moon also deal with the subconscious. It deal with memory. So it's the reflection of the sun, which means when you contemplate, yeah, or you overthink something, or you continue to think about something or reflect, you're dealing with the moon sign. The moon sign is a powerful force. This is your true self or who you really are deep within you. The sun sign is the, the, the outer self of who you are. But the moon sign is the inner self. This is your true self, how you truly feel. So with this being said, if you got moon in the first house, this deal with the self. This is the house of the self, the house of Aries. And so the traits of you will be that of the nurturing kind, of the ancestor kind who love the ancestors, who love the roots, who love the culture, who love the home life. And who's protective over the people you love. So you can be very possessive. Who very territorial. And also you deal with emotions. And so you're the type who will be good with anybody emotions. Because you know about emotions. This is your field. So this is yourself. This is what makes you very psychic or intuitive. We're dealing with feeling the emotions of others. Feeling, feeling it in your body. Which you can be very clear sentience. So you can feel somebody's emotions and tell about a person. You can feel it in their arm. to let you know that this person is seeking knowledge of this person. The left arm lets you know that this person wants to express themselves or they're very knowledgeable. And the right arm is they carry it out. They carry this knowledge out. They make some good speakers. And so just by you being able to feel things, you can tell about a person. You can tell about an individual through feelings. So this is the most psychic. The moon is the most psychic because even Neptune is another version of the moon. They just call it Neptune. It might be the full moon like that. But or or it could be the last moon. But Neptune is also a part of the moon. Before they were Neptune, you got the moon. So this deal with the mother. So this makes you very authoritative figure when it's dealing with nurturing, caring, and you know. What a person needs to survive and to live and to make it. And this moon in the first house, this deal with yourself or who you are. So if you got moon in the first house, because I'm a cancer rising, which means this will play some some of the part of me. Even though I'm a cancer rising, I still got some of the, the moon traits in me. And so if you're a cancer rising in the first house, you will have some of the moon traits in you because cancer deals with the moon. Cancer planet is the moon. But if you got the moon in your chart in the first house, this is how you will react. You deal with emotions. So people can feel when you talk. They can see, see it in your face. The emotions in your face. Yes, your face is full of emotions. So we got moon in the first house. This is you. You're emotional type. But you're the type who is very smart and very psychic. Very wise. And you learn from your past if you're on the upside. But if you're on the downside, you can regret. You can uh, be very fearful. And you can go through it. You can go through it emotionally. You can't handle your emotions. They're too wild. Emotion is a strong force. So you can chop somebody down. And so the moon is, is not the powerful sign. One of the most powerful signs next to the sun. It's the sun and the moon. Because you got the father, you got the mother. So the moon is very powerful, very strong. So that's why they like the bodyguards and the protectors of those they love. And also... To, uh, the protector of life itself because they also protect those who they, they do not love also or those who are strangers better yet to say because so, if, if if a person who has the moon the first time figure that an individual need their protection and a person getting ch uh, chumped off they will protect that person an individual and they're not scared they, it's a very strong force they deal with feeling the feeling so strong vibrate in them so so when they hit somebody or 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 protect somebody, they're gonna be strong. So 
That being said, the mother is not weak. She deal with wisdom too, because you go to your mother for wisdom. And she the nurture, the caregiver, the nurse, the doctor. And so the moon is very in tune to the way you feel, in tune to the way you act. She knows. You might don't know, so you cannot deceive a person who got moon in the first house. Or a cancer rising person. Period. So now, we got moon in the second house. This deal with values. It's about what you value. It's the Venus effect. This is the Venus house, but it's the earthly Venus effect. It's so it's all about the way you feel and, and what you value. And so your self-worth is very important. It's about what you value. So if you like something, that's what you're going to value. But if you like a certain job, that's what you're going to value. Since it's the earth sign, you can be fixed in what you value. If it's good or negative. And so the moon makes you the type. Because it's the second house, you would like things that deal with emotions, healing, therapy, and jobs like of nursing, caregiving type of jobs. And also a job to deal with the house or real estate. Because I can't forget about the moon also deals with the home. It deals with the home. And so the moon in the first house, you definitely are the individual who like the home. In the second house, you definitely the type who want to build a home or sell a home, real estate. So with that being said, the moon placement is very important, especially in the second house, because the second house makes you more sexual. You got very romantic, very romantic and very compassionate and very loving because it's the moon in Venus. And so you got the moon can correlate with, with the feminine nature of Venus, which makes you very sexual and, and very empathic, where you can definitely be an empath and feel people's emotions and pain because it's definitely a psychic placement, just like the first house. Because the way you like to go about things is very practical in an earthly way. So your emotions deal with the, uh, uh, the earthly plane of existence. And so you make a good uh, business person, a good hustler. And the reason why you make a good person because you never know a good hustler or a business person because you never know when your emotions are going to switch up. So you got to work for yourself. You can't work for nobody else because it's a need to be in charge. It's a need to be in charge of something. It's that mother energy. The mother is definitely it. You know what I mean? It's a need to be in charge with your wisdom. And if you don't, you can hold, withhold your emotions until they explode because you don't want to bring them out. And this is the moon in the second house about what you value. And so what you value, you value privacy. You value beauty. You value things that's creative, the, the arts, expressions. You value vacations. You value the good life. You would like the, the good life. Moon the second house people, they like the good life. It's all about vacations. It's all about beauty. It was beauty, beautiful. Not only beautiful as the outside appearance, because that do matter because you deal with the earth, right? But also beauty all around. Beauty in the trees. Beauty in the water. And also, you like to eat things that look good. If the food don't look good, you might don't eat it because it deals with what you value. And it deal with uh, beauty, the Venus effect in this house. This is the house of Venus, about what you value. And this is how you move. So anything that's ugly, you will X out. But it gotta, everything got to be practical in this house, realistic in this house. And so you're very empathic with the people, ways, and their thoughts. You can pick up on the energy. You can definitely feel it in your earthly body. And so... Even if you don't know what you feel, you will have that, that energy. You just feel it. You don't know why you feel like you're in pain or why you feel like, like this and that. But you kind of feel that it's not your energy. So you can, you can second guess yourself. Is this my energy? I just was happy. Well, why am I like this? Because you know this not your energy. Basically, this is not your energy. Even if you don't know, this is not your energy. This is somebody else's energy. You will know what is your energy. So it's your job to interpret what energy is yours? So we got the moon in the second house. This makes you very artistic, creative. So you like things that's creative. You like things that are artistic. So you do anything that deal with photography work, that deal with storytelling or writing. The reason why, because you got a very creative mind, a meditative mind. And so just like the moon itself is a meditative, just like the first house placement, the first house people is very meditative too. So the second house, it makes you more mad to with the Venus effect, but you're mad to when dealing with things that's beauty and things that deal with creativity. So it makes you a great 
storyteller because you can create uh, movies in your head just through imagine he could feel it it feel real so you know how to put things into the proper perspective into the proper place when you write things down and so you will get into feels like that it's about what you value so your self-worth is very important and so whatever you value you will protect you will nurture you will care for it could be what you possess if you possess a book that you like you will keep it and be protected over that book. You might even fight over that book. The same thing with family and friends. Because you're all about love. This is the house of love. But what kind of love, you got to put it into practical reality. Because this is what not only Venus, but the earthly Venus. Now, you're very smart, of course, because you're an empath. You pick up on people's energy. And this is natural to you. So you can be you can be the type who cry a lot. Just like the first house play, place with the moon itself. Or cancer rise in the first house. Or the moon itself. This, these people are very uh, caring, but they also can be crybabies, or they can cry. So they got different type of uh, crying. They got the, the crying in joy, and they got the crying that a uh, pain. So either either or, these people can cry a lot. Same thing with you who are in the second house, because you got Venus added to it. You you would cry about things that's beautiful. That'd be very joyful and happy to you. And you can pick up on the energy of somebody else crying because you're an empath. Now, when we got moon in the third house, you deal with siblings, you deal with kids and siblings. And so your, your siblings is very important to you. That I mean, you get mo emotion about that. Maybe y'all can get along or maybe not. Y'all might have fights. So this is the moon in, in the third house. So since you got Mercury there, you will do things uh the Mercury air, the way um, the way you think will be intuitive. This makes you a intuitive genius because Mercury will speed up the moon in this house. So you will live a fast pace. Your emotions will be strong. That I mean, a fast moving emotion. Your emotions go from from the past uh, to the present, all the way to the future, because you got Mercury in, in, in this placement. Not only Mercury, but Mercury air, and the air goes in. In, in every field like the past represents the water the present represents the earth and the future represents the fire so the air going all of them so by you having the moon and mercury you can get on any topic any subject that and, and, and all this play a part not just mentally but also your emotions is very important in this house so it makes a good teacher what makes you one of the best teacher because you can feel what you talk about you just know what you're talking about because you're very intuitive, very psychic-like. And so when dealing with information, you just understand topics. You understand You understand what you read. You understand other people's points of view. And you like knowledge. You like things that enhance you and make you grow. You like things that stimulate you emotionally and mentally. So vice versa. So not only is you intuitive and deal with feelings, but you also are very smart mentally. Because you got the air in there. You're in the house of air. So when the motion, the water is in the air. It's like a hurricane. But that's that's when you want to describe somebody in nature. Because you had a flat tongue. And you bring emotions with it. It won't be just a chop down. It don't feel like nothing. It will feel like something. Because you're very good at speaking. And so this is the moon in the third house. So you do things that deals with Mercury in the third house. You do things that deals with communicating, expressing yourself. So you're very expressive, emotional. People can feel what you say. And you know how to put things in perspective where people can feel you. So you can be uh, emotional, intelligence, and you can manipulate people through emotions. Because you're very fast-paced. You're not just like the, the moon in the first house. You got the moon in the house of Mercury, so you move fast. You're not that slow emotion. So they'll say you move fast. So, so, so you can... Not only I thank somebody, you can quickly emotionally feel somebody and break down things quicker than anybody in this house. Since you got the nurturing mother uh, spirit that's in this house right here, the third house, that makes you the nurturer of education. This makes you the caregiver of your siblings and of kids. But also, on the downside, you can be the type who can have a nasty mouth against your siblings. And stuff like that. So, but you're good with lingo, and you can feel what you're talking about. Not only because if you can't feel 
this information, you ain't going to do good. You ain't going to feel right because it's your emotions in this house and Mercury. And this is a speedy house. But when you got the moon in here, the moon got to speed. The, the moon got to do what it do. And the moon is fast in here. So the moon is moving. You know what I mean? Not only moving, the motions is going. So you got to you a powerful person, powerful force to deal with. Because you got the moon in the third house. So you got the moon in the first and third house. Your education is the key to you. Not only education, your education about social work, social working, like helping people, like helping people on a, on a wide scale because your emotions is everywhere. You get bored quickly. Your emotions get bored quickly. You don't have your emotions bored because you might be very moody. You know what I mean? Because you got mercury air. You're in the house of mercury air. So you can be very moody. You know what I mean? So watch out for that. So that being said, with the moon in the third house, you definitely psychic. It ain't no way around it. Well, you can read people like a book because you can feel the energy. You can understand the energy. This makes you more psychic than anything because you got Mercury. You're in the house of speed where you got to understand people's emotions. Because if you don't, you'll be left out. And so on the downside, on the downside, you, you cannot uh, read through the lines. You know what I mean? You're very slow. You know what I mean? So you good at expressing yourself. So the throat area is very popular and very important. Just like your sacral chakra, your sacral area. You know what I mean? And so the way you express yourself is through creative measures. Not only creative, through writing, through speaking, through expressions of all kinds. So that being said, this will make you a good teacher and be able to relate to women. So you definitely could relate the females and women quickly to anybody. And you can relate to some of everybody. It's all about the ancestors. Not only do you feel it, you speak it. This is the expression. Or you write it by the ancestors. You know what I mean? Or your roots when you grow up. You represent it to the core. And so your roots ain't only just sitting there. You're speaking it. You're expressing about your culture, about who you represent. So that being said, and you're the protector of your family. You, you know what I mean? And you show it. You express yourself and you show that you, you're the protector. You're strong. So you speak up for your family. You take up for your family. So this is what it deals with. So that being said, now moon in the fourth house. This is my placement. Moon in the fourth house. This is my place. Not only is I'm a cancer rising, but my moon is in the fourth house. So the moon is in, in the house of, of what it's already in. So this is your house naturally. This is the moon house naturally. So I would have all the moon traits like of cancer. Very intuitive. Just like the first house, it would be the same reflection. So moon in 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 the uh in the fourth house is all about it's all about the home life all about family all about the roots all about the ancestors all about the culture it's all about the protecting energy so I'm a protector I've been the protector of people all my life especially family members the neighborhood things of that nature and I will protect those who I love stuff like that and also it makes me a fighter for those I love. And but also the moon people, we can be very defensive. Even the first house, in general, the moon is very de defensive. Like we might think somebody's saying something about it, but they're not. We get defensive and we snap just quick and set it off. Because the moon is very defensive and protective. So the moon stay on the defense. So me, I stay on the defense and emotionally. I'm definitely psychic. Definitely pick up on people's emotions of class I done did I done did class readings to many people. So even though I'm a Libra son, but we dealing with the house, you got moon in the fourth house, it's very important. So this is part of who I am. And this is why I can pick up on people's emotions, understand it, and they always sound like I'm in emotion sometimes. And I stay in joy. Or I stay uh uh overcoming what I go through, you know what I mean, emotionally. And I had to learn how to master my emotions because this is the house of emotions. That's why I never want to appear emotional to now. To not understand that I had to accept who I was as emotional being. So the fourth house people, we deal with the home. The mother is very important. We love our mother. We love women in general. We, we can either do good with women or we can have problems with women. So those who have problems with women might have the moon in their chart or moon in the fourth house, something like that. So I'm saying so. Or those who are good with women, who truly know woman's spirit, who can read a woman better than anybody, no matter if it's a man or a woman who has the moon in the fourth house, 
is those who are in the fourth house. Like I say, moon in the fourth house is those who can read women's better than anybody because they understand women. They got some of that woman woman quality in them. Not not homosexual, not gay, or nothing like that. It's just that we understand women. We understand females. And that's only when we in the right mind state. So you got to be in the right mind state and balance to be able to understand women in general. So the moon in the fourth house deals with the home. They love cooking. They love the home. So when they say mama's cooking, the moon in general, no matter if it's a cancer moon, like I'm a cancer rise in the first house, but moon in the first house, the moon in general deals with cooking, eating. It deals with hosting the family. Uh, they're all about love because the moon is about love. The moon is about caring. Just like Venus, the moon is about love. Just like Neptune, the moon is about love. So with that being said, the moon is empathic. The moon is classithious. The moon can feel your pain. You can't lie to a moon person. They can read you. So it's a very strong place. It's a moon in the fourth house. It's people like myself. When we get started on something, we persist it. We, we persisted because this is the house of cancer. Cancer is cardinal. So when you got the moon in this house, we're very persistent to, to get things done. And we will get it done. And we're good at business. We're good at reading people. So this will make us good business people because we're good at understanding the energy. Understanding a person's energy and vibe and know what to say and know how to make deals due to the moon in the fourth house. See, the mother knows. The mother is wisdom. No matter if you got a, if you're a man or woman in this house, you still carry some of this mother energy. It's really you'll be the father, father, mother <laughs> type energy. The mother part is the nurturing, the caring part, the caregiving, and what it represents, the home. You know what I mean? So doing things in the home, like I always make my videos in the home. You always see me mostly in the home a lot, or wherever, or wherever I can adapt to, or that I'm familiar with would be home to me. So. The moon people deal with uh, deal with, with what they're familiar with and where they can uh, where they can adapt. So not only the moon in the fourth house, I'm speaking of the moon in general, but since I have the moon in the fourth house and those who have the moon in the fourth house, this is you too. This is you too. You know what I mean, definitely you, because you definitely deal with this area of life. Because you got the moon in the house of cancer, so your emotions would deal with cancer things. It would deal with. The mother nurturing energy, the caring energy, the ones who got the creative mind, the writer, the ones who highly intelligence, who's emotional intelligence, who understand pe the emotions of people, who not manipulate people through emotions. And so you are the type who very sensual because the moon is very sensual and love and love their sensuality. Unless they're on the downside. They love their creative, their creative skills. They love things that's creative and beautiful. Just like Venus effect. So the moon people are the type who want to see you win. So, so the mother want to see you win. She's the nurturer, the caregiver. She want to see you win all the time. So those who have moon in the first house or the moon period. Deals with they want to see you win. They all trying to help you. They understand you. They're always listening. So the moon is always listening. Because the people receive energy. Like I receive energy. Not only just give out. I receive energy. See my Libra makes me talk. Or Jupiter in, in, in uh, Cancer in the first house. But we ain't doing Jupiter placement right now. But I'm just saying. That Jupiter makes me the type of Cancer energy. A moon energy that talkative. But also got the Libra that make me talkative. But back on the track. The moon itself can be shy. But the reason why it's shy because it's picking up on the energy. And it got to feel familiar with you. So when the moon when the moon people feel familiar with you, they will open up to you. And so they don't know you. They just not going to step to you like that. We got to feel secure. Those who have the moon and the four five, we got to feel safe before we can uh, talk to you. You can't even. It's hard to see a person who got the moon. The moon in the fourth house of the moon, period. Because these people got to feel comfortable and I feel safe. You know what I mean? Because they always, always try to see if things are all right before they before they mess with you, before they deal with you. Can't just mess with moon and four or five people on the GP. They gotta understand you. So with that being said, the moon 
And the fourth house people, they definitely love the answers, the roots, the family, very important. So they all looking through the family albums and things like that. Because I do it myself. You, I ask about all the family members. want to know about everything, the whole roots, the culture, where we come from. And so this is the, this is the moon and the fourth house people. So this, this is very important. The moon and the fourth house people are the individuals who love you, who just love you and want to see you do good. They're all about love. They're all about love. And because they want they, they live by integrity, very loyal, very patient when dealing with anybody. You know what I mean, and they're more into you than anything because they're all about love. Now, this moon in the fourth house, who could be your protector? If they love you, they will protect you and die for you. What they call the patriot. So that being said, now you understand they protect their territory too. No matter what hood they're from, they're gonna protect it. No matter where they stay, they're gonna protect it. Their home, they're gonna protect it. Because this is what they're about. Their territory they gotta feel comfortable and safe in their environment. So don't mess with these people. This this America was built on the moon, on the moon culture. So with that being said, now moon in the fifth house. Now when you're dealing with the moon in the house of the sun, the moon emotions gonna have fun. The moon vibing right now. The moon wanna shine right now. This 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 is the house of the sun. So the moon gonna do things that's playful, hobby. To feed their emotions, and this will feed their emotions because if they don't, they can tear themselves down emotionally. You know what I mean? So the moon people are gonna feed themselves with hobbies, and and they care for the kids emotionally. So you better not hurt the kids, period. Because this this house here, the moon they love them kids. If you do anything toxic, the mother energy, which the moon in the fifth house, oh yeah, they gonna get to you. They coming at you. So don't I don't care who the kids be. Uh, I don't care. What kid it be? The moon in the, in the fifth house people would destroy about their kids. But also the moon in the fifth house could also go through it with their kids. So it could be vice versa. But the moon in the fifth house people, they love to shine. The spotlight it will feed their emotions. It help their emotions. It's, it help them thrive. So they want to shine. They want to be famous. This is what's in them. This is their inner self, even if you don't see it. So when they do go to the, go, be in the spotlight, they feel good and they shine. You be like, oh, I didn't know that, cause that's 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 their inner self. So they might don't even, you might don't even see their emotions. So a lot of people with the moon placement, you might don't see their emotions, but what they, what's hitting in them, you know what I mean? You will see it come out eventually, cause it's a powerful force. It just can't stay bottled in. So when you got the moon in the fifth house, these people here, they like to have fun. They 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 create games in their mind. They they know how to create games. Uh, they're very inventive So these are your inventors And things like that These are your musicians And music people These are your, your people Who love family gatherings Who like to have fun and With the, with the family And the fun Will be on, on the Leo level Which means the sun level It'll be just how the sun operate The fun will be doing Like the sun things That I mean So it'll be more entertaining So they love to entertain they love to uh, help people, inspire people, motivate people, and then how they come from their emotions. And so this makes them not only about their heart. Then we got the moon to deal with their heart. The moon protects their heart anyway, which is the breast or the chest. Um, also, since this, this is the house of the sun, the moon is very protective about things that deal with the sun energy, that deals with their creativity. And so it's, it's best for you to compliment them. Uh, compliment their gifts, compliment their talents, and and they will feel good because the moon deals with creativity, it deal with hobbies, it deal with having fun, it deal with sex. So definitely they love sex. They most be on sex a lot of them anyway. So they might have more than one uh, partner. It depends on depends on who it is because the moon could be disciplined too now, even in the house of the sun. So the moon people when they get that partner, they're loyal to that partner. I mean, they want a partner who have fun, who uh, adventurous, and they also want a partner who's strong, like the sun energy. I mean, and they want a partner who's happy because this is a happy placement. The the moon is happy once you got to self balance. The moon can work good in the house of the father. So those with the mother energy gonna like the masculine scrim. They gonna like men who's strong, men who tough, stuff like that. They gonna like. People of authority. It could be man or woman of authority. They like anything that's strong. That's they were scrum. Cause the sun is a strong placement. They like things of scruff and power. And also they can get into people. They can get into it with people 
who has script of po power or they can get into it with their father they, or they can get into it with a father figure or they can get into it with men so it could go vice versa so moon in the fifth house are the people who will have a goal have a plan and will complete it they will complete that goal and so these make great teachers and they know how to teach the way they teach will be so fun it would be using their creative expressive expression and so these people are very good at that. And so the moon in the sun house are the people that you want to entertain you, that you want to be on that stage, that you want because they're going to show you a good time. So they're very awesome. So now we got moon in the sixth house, moon in the sixth house. This that that earthly Mercury energy. This is the house of Virgo. So we got moon in the house of Virgo. The moon Want to want to express itself on re realistic stuff. The moon wants to serve and actually help you. This is your emotions. So you got the moon in the sixth house. Your emotions is, is on helping people, and the way the way that you feel good is when you help and serve people in a practical way. You just don't want to think of it emotionally. You want to do it. This, this is your motivation. This is what's in you. This is your true self. You actually want to do it. You actually want to help people. You you thrive on it. And when you help people, you feel good. It could be the smallest things. You want to help and serve people. And so we got the moon in, in the sixth house. You are the type of, of people who want to see people heal, who always want to come up with ways of people healing. This is within you. No matter what, what your sun sign is, but if you got the moon in the sixth house, you 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 always digging. To find answers and solutions to people's problems. Because you definitely are a humanitarian. And definitely like to help people. You like to help people. That's your forte. So you're always digging up. And you need concrete evidence that this work. And so by you having moon in, in, in the sixth house. Which is Mercury house. Which is Virgo. It's, it's best for you to live also from your intuition. Because you're very psychic. Very strong. So you're very empathic. Due to the moon nature that's in this house. So you got moon in the house of Mercury. It's best for you to listen to, to, to your intuition. Listen to not only your logic self and by finding facts, but sometimes it's good for you to balance it out with your intuition because you're very intuitive to, to people. We're, we're dealing with people. So, so I know that you love to gather information. You like to learn and you make a great teacher. And this is within you. It's a need. The moon is a need. No matter all through all the houses, the moon in any house is the need. This is what I need to do. I need to. And so if you don't, you might feel ill or sick. So that's why, like, since the Virgo, like herbs and herbs, so you might have feel a need to be healthy, feel a need to work out. And you always talk about how you look. And if you're a big person, you always talk about, I'm so fat. Could that matter to you? So this type of stuff that. The moon and six house placement deal with it deal with finding a solution to things and like finding the answer. What can heal you? What can help? Because you definitely a healer because this is the Virgo house of healing. So this is the house of healing, serving, helping. And so this makes you a great healer because you all find a solutions. You know how to heal. It gets so it gets so it gets so excited and so advanced until you don't really need your logical nature no more because your intuition going to tell you because you got all this information, all this knowledge. You just totally know how to heal people without even asking because you, with all the information, you put the combination together. You just, I know. You just know how to heal and it works. You come up with new solutions and, and, and you always find answers. So it's best for you to get in occupation that deal with nur nurturing because you make a great nurturer and you're very practical. You make a great counselor, a great advisor, and things like that. The moon also makes a great counselor no matter what house you're in. Well, how's the moon in 1 through 12? The moon itself is a great counselor because it's the mother energy. So you make sure you're a great counselor to the moon in the sixth house. You definitely carry it out more than anybody because it's a need. You in the house of Virgo where you need to do this practical things that make you feel good. So counseling, giving advice, and you see people grow because you like to see people do good. You like to see people grow. It's just like having a Virgo moon like what I am, a Virgo moon, sort of like that because you got moon in the sixth house. It's be the same like like that energy. So I'm a Virgo moon myself. But we talk moon in the house of Virgo, which is the sixth house. You like to help people. It's a need. And when you help people, you feel good. And you like to be appreciated for helping people. And when you appreciate it, you definitely feel more better. Even if you don't say it to people, 
This is what makes you feel good. Helping people and seeing people win and seeing people grow. And when they don't, you got nasty tongue where to some people you can be fussy. You can be fussy. You can be very critical, always criticizing. That's on, on, on the downside. But also you can be critical on the upside, but it's positive criticism. What they call constructive criticism because you want to see somebody do better. Like, you can do it. Don't act like that. You can do it. You know what I mean? Because constructive criticism. And you say, you might say, oh, like in basketball, you might say, oh, that shot weak. You can do better than that because you're trying to motivate them. They, they think that, that you're criticizing them. It is because you know they can do better than that. And you want to see them win. You actually want to see them win. It's in your, in your soul. You know a person can do it. So you, you're here to help those who definitely want to be helped. You love to help those because you like to see when people win and they approve themselves and better themselves. You know what I mean? Come they, and become their best self. So this, this is what it is with you. You make a great teacher, healer, counselor because you deal with information. So researcher, scientist, scientific mind. And so this is the moon in the sixth house. Now moon in the seventh house. Moon in the seventh house is the energy that deals with that deal with the Libra light energy. And so we got moon in the seventh house. You good at relating to people, places, and things because you know the moon is, is private. But when you in the seventh house, you good at relating to people, places, and things. You deal with that, or you gonna learn that. See, these houses gonna teach you to, to become that if you're not doing that. Some of you are already doing that in these houses, and if you're not. The moon will teach you in this area of life. You deal with this area of life, which means moon in the seventh house. You can be good at relating to people, not only people, but places and things. With me, nature, the birds, everything. You're going to learn how to in tune. Because the moon is very spiritual, too. The moon itself is very spiritual, no matter what house. And so those who got moon in the seventh house would deal with things of the Libra traits, that deal with things that deal with the mind, things that deal with. Uh, healing, cause Libra, want, Libra love love, so you would love the idea of love. Not only love the idea of love, you would feel it emotionally. You know what I mean? So this is a need that you need love. You need a partner. You would do good in business, in, in partnership with anybody. It could be a partnership in business, partnership in friendship. It could be friendship. It could be partnership in anything. Uh, connecting with people, you do good with that. You do good with, with groups. That I mean, you do good with psychology because you know the mind and you know what makes a person uh, tick and the way they think. Because this is what you like to know. You like to know what makes, makes a person tick and how they think. And you deal with all points of views and all perspectives. So you make a good judge because you're a good judge of character. I mean, so you definitely are intuitive. The leap is already intuitive when dealing with people, places, and things, and things of beauty, and dealing with judgment, and dealing with things like weighing up, weighing up. Weighing up our Oscars, decisions, and situations. You're good at that naturally. So when you got the moon there, it makes you intuitively know. I just know that mother energy do good in this house because the mother get to serve all her kids when the kids is people worldwide. Is it get to serve people worldwide? Those who need help, really. So you do good. You need a partner. You do good in partnership all around. You do good when you deal with the Libra type things like the Libra world, like beauty, fashion. Yes, you want to be the hardest, so you're going to be the hardest. And Libra deal with sex, so you be good by, by being very sensual because this is the Venus effect. You're very sensual. So you can be a model and all, all, all these things. A model, like take pictures and photograph photographs and all that. So you can be a photographer, a filmmaker, and all these things here. So with that being said, when you got the moon in the seventh house, you talking about relating to people, places, and things. This is what you do best. You're good at relating to people and bringing people together. And finding solutions to bring people together. You'd be a great diplomat and peacemaker and problem solver. You're a great diplomat, peacemaker, and problem solver. Finding solutions to bring people together. And to, to stop the family from, from, from warning against each other. Also, you're good with emotional uh, manipulating with dealing with people. So you also, because it's the house of Cardinal, you will take action like a cardinal, which means a leader. You're good at creating and initiating new ways with dealing with the mind and emotions. I mean, so you're good at creating and inventing things and starting off something. So you make a great leader in this house, a leader when dealing with people. People motivate you. Without people, you might feel some type of way. If you don't feel the love when dealing with people, you feel some type of way. So you, it's like you need the people to feel that love. And once you feel that love, you'll be at your best. But once you learn that yourself is enough, 
is 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 all the love you need. This is how you win. Because you understand that self-love is also loving others. So once you understand that, you win like that. And so with this being said, let me make sure a good mind reader, good at uh organizing, structuring things, put it in good perspective when dealing with groups and people, organization, you're very creative, you make a good musician, anything to do with the arts and things like that. You're the creative artist, you create your existence, your reality when you got the moon in the seventh house. Now, we got the moon in the eighth house. This is the house of Pluto. This is the house of Pluto. So now, the moon is in, in the water house. Because the, the moon is already a, a water sign. And then it's in the house of Pluto. And so when you got the moon in the house of Pluto, Pluto deal with power. This is, this is emotional power. This is love power. This is intuitive power, psychic power. This is the nurturing power. This is... The, the magnetic powers, the charming power, because the moon is also charming. So this is charming power. So this is the power that the moon will use in this house, in this house of sexity. So you very into sex. Yes. You're talking, your emotions go deep into sex. And so long as people is on the upside in this house, they're good. Because on the downside, they can be so assessed when dealing with sex until they have sex with anybody and everything. And so... But if they, you're on the upside, you're good. You know what I mean? So this is the house of researching and like to know what is what is the deal. Who like to explore the unknown. Ain't scared of nothing. Don't buy nothing. This house go hard. And so your emotions like things that it don't understand. Your emotions like things that's hidden. Because your emotions like to solve problems. So this makes you a medium. A psychic medium where... You can talk to spirits where you can actually pick up on energy through your body, a channel energy. You can channel energy through your body. You know what I mean? So you're very in tune with the underworld. You're very in tune with the ancestors. So you might be the one who the ancestors, ancestors talk to and understand the ancestors. Because Pluto is very powerful. It did with transformation. So you will go through it in your life emotionally. You go through a lot of stuff. So your past is very important. But... You will transform from the past and be the new you. Because the Pluto keep moving. The Pluto is grown. The Pluto is transforming. You always transform. You always change in appearance. First you might be, for example, first you might be uh, Batman and now you want to be Superman. That's just for example. You just transform. You can put other things in. in you can put other wordings. You, you can use other wordings and, and give it an example like how I'm giving an example. So you, first you could be this, be that, but you always changing your appearance till you finally get it. So you're transforming, transforming, transformation. You don't stay on one thing. First you might be into rap, then you into singing, then you into you transform until you really find yourself. You keep transforming. You know what I mean? So you deal with change, and you deal with struggles and learning from your struggles, and you deal with uh, learning from power, learning what power is about emotionally. And this is within you. You learn what power is about. You learn you might go against the government or go against uh, those who are in authority, those who are in power, or those of the father figure because you deal with power. You deal with power. And so you learn from it. You can either learn from it or you continue to fight and die from it because this is also the house of death, transformation, rebirth, and birth, and life like that. So with that being said, so... You could also be fixed because this is the house that's fixed too. So we got the moon in the fixed house. It's, it depends on what you fixed on. So when you stuck on something that worked for you, you would not change. And so we did the Pluto energy. The Pluto don't like fakeness. The Pluto like solid, solid things. So your emotions is on solid things. And you could tell if somebody not solid because you intuitively know. And so also since the moon could be private and Pluto definitely private. It's all about your circle, your loved ones. It's all about those selected few who you kick it with. If, if it's not them, if they're not in your circle, you don't rock with them. See, the thing is, you keep it real. If you don't rock with them, you don't rock with them. You know what I mean? So nobody can manipulate you, period. Because this is one of the most powerful places when you got Boom in the house of Pluto. So Pluto is definitely the psychic house, the occult house, looking into the unknown, the hidden, the secrets. Of the government, the secrets of Freemasonry, the, the secrets of anything, the, the secrets of life. So this is the house that break down in the code of secrets, and and 
bring it out forward. So this is within you. This is your emotions. This is your inner self. This is a need. You need to find a secret. You need to find an answer. You don't like to go through life not knowing. Because this is the house that loves to find secrets. And you thrive off that. You feel good in the, in the eight house finding secrets. And so once you do, you feel secure. And transforming. This is what you're good at. So your sexity, your identity, and what you want is very important. It's all about what you want in this house. But your moon is what you need. But this is the house of want. So what you need is what you want. So it's about what you want. And nobody's going to stop you to get what you want. Because you can be very ruthless, you're very persistent, very loyal. Even though on the good side, upside, you're very caring. you got a very caring emotion. You want to see everybody do good. And you're very loving. But but Because you could be a humanitarian also, either or. It's like that in this house. If you transform to your higher self, then you, got, you, could, be, you could be the type who be a world ruler. But since this is your emotions... Within you, this is all this is what you're feeling within you. Eventually, you're going to carry it out. You ain't going to keep that hit within you. You are the powerhouse. So, you are the moon power. That is the, the house of the moon power. The moon really show itself in power and authority. The mother power, the, the ultimate nurturer, the ultimate caregiver. So, so, you go beyond your reach to care for somebody. Because this is the house that go to the screen. So, when you do something, you really nurture somebody. And so... Anything you do, you go. You can go overboard. This is that house of Pluto. Pluto don't play. Now, we got moon in the, in the ninth house. The moon in the Jupiter house. Sagittarius house. We talking about people who love knowledge, who love to learn, who love to, to communicate, who are very cheerful, who love to explore, very adventurous. Because this is what you got inside of you. Get all this inside of you. You love to explore. You love to explore. You love to do things. You don't like to be bored, period. If you do... You, your emotions just gonna, gonna go off. You just get so emotions. You just hate to be bored. You like excitement and you like your freedom. This deal with freedom. Freedom is very important. Not only do you like your freedom, you'll fight for it and fight for other people's freedom. You're a freedom lover. So in this house here, knowledge is the key. This is the house of wisdom. So the mother got wisdom. So the moon do good in the ninth house. The, so the moon love Jupiter. So the moon do good in this house. So the moon be, is a, Jupiter is exhausted in the moon. So in, in this house, the moon will be exhausted. The moon will love it. The moon at its best. So you could be the type who deal with expansion of your mind, expansion of your emotions, expansion of whatever you put your put yourself into. Because the moon expands in this house. So you think you're psychic, you be super psychic. Because the moon would expand you, you would grow and to be better with every step. The moon deal with wisdom. So from your past, you definitely learn in this house. You definitely bring up your spirits, your past experience, and 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 help people through your past experience. Cause the moon loves this house of wisdom, of learning, the house of luck. So your luck is whew, awesome. All type of things happen out of nowhere for you. All the good stuff, all the good stuff happen for you out of nowhere. Unless it's on the downside, then on the downside is, is vice versa, where it don't. Where, where your luck, where you don't have no luck, where you don't feel like you have no luck, but nationality, this is a good placement, so you do have luck in some way. But in this house here, we talk about education. You like learn about everything. You like learn about cultures. You like learn from children. You like learn from everybody. And this is a universal love type place placement. So you you love some of everybody. Your love is everywhere. You want to nurture. And help everyone. You care for everyone. You definitely tune with people, emotions. Not only people emotions, but emotions of the environment, the, mo the emotions of the atmosphere, which means the pressure of the atmosphere, the energy of the atmosphere. So you you in tune with energy on a worldwide level, a frequency, not just not just an individual emotion, because this is Jupiter. And so you do good in business. You do good in anything that you touch, anything that was speaking in public, in the public. Anything that deal with wisdom, teaching, healing. So you're very clairvoyant because you can see the big picture. You understand. You can see very cla clairvoyance and clairsentience all in one. So not only clairvoyance, once you learn, you expand. You expand in being a clairvoyance. Which means you can see images and graphics of people and understand it and break it down because you deal with wisdom. So the thing is with you, is for you to be able to listen to others and be able to stay still for a minute so you can win. Because you like to move, you like to do things, you get very bored, very agitated, very confused. So watch out for that. Now, we got moon, 
Cause the moon like love to learn in the ninth house too. The moon love to learn about some of everything. The moon always learning. So also we got moon in the tenth house. I said moon in the tenth house. This is the house of Capricorn, jobs and careers. So you put your emotions into Capricorn things. You take initiative when it comes to business, organization, structures. You're the powerhouse. Your emotions is the powerhouse when dealing with businesses, organization, structures, and getting the job done. You don't play, you get the job done. It's a need. This your mostly. This how you mostly feel. You got to get it done. All the work that you put in, you got to get it done. You don't play. So you definitely can, can run organizations on your own corporations and things like that. So this is Saturn. This give you discipline. You're very organized. You're very structured. And so it makes you an organized speaker, a good speaker. You're careful with your set your mouth. But also you will go through it in this house. You'll go through things that dealing with authority figures and de dealing with Saturn things. To you go have you go through struggles and pains until you learn. And you learn good, so this makes you a teacher also. But the teacher in the earthly plane of things that deal with the earthly stuff. So with that being said, you, you the type who good with your hands, the craft person, and all that there. Uh, like the moon in the ninth house is very creative and have a very creative expression of seeing things. You got a great power at organizing and bringing people together as a whole. And and you want recognition for your work. You want recognition for doing good things. You want recognition for being that powerhouse and being that leader. You want to be somebody. So you you got you the type who want to move up in ranks. Who want to be that that person, that boss. So this the boss, the boss house. That, that this the house of the boss, the house of the kings and queens who want to ascend on an earthly, realistic level. And so you don't see fantasy. You see more practical things. But you also could. Could utilize your magnetic mind because the emotions give you the magic magnetic mag mind. The moon give you the magic mind, so you can be very intuitive when it comes to business sense and where to put people, where to put people when dealing with uh, with dealing with business, or you know how to run a, organize anything. You know where to put people because you know how to read a person character. You know people character. You know who would do this and who would do that. You know the practical things that people do. You can observe people uh, uh, face and features and understand somebody because you can feel it emotionally. Now, so it's all about recognition and structure for you. And so now we got Moon and Eleven House. This is the house of Aquarius. This is the house that deals with the abstract mind, the abstract mind uh, being different. This is the house of being unique. This is the house of change. And so for you, you're very intelligent, highly intelligent. So your emotions deals with the intellect. Your, your emotions deal with things that are different. You're good at sp spotting out the differences in people because this is your emotions. So you're good at reading the differences of people because Aquarius already intuitive. We got the emotions involved. That makes you emotionally intuitive when dealing with the human nature. So it makes you the ultimate humanitarian. It makes you emotionally intelligent. When reading a person, place, and things and situations quickly, you can do it quickly because this is Uranus energy is very quickly. <laughs> so you get downloads quickly, information. You just got the cognitive ability where you just know. But sometimes you could be a know it all on the downside. So watch out for that. So this is the house, the moon 11 house. This is the house of uh, pouring out the truth, speaking your truth, living in your truth. This is the house of. Uh, Uranus was dealing with information, education that deals with socialization. So you like to socialize and interact with people. You like to do it on a global scale. You deal with humanitarian issues on a global scale. This is also the house of rebellious that can rebel against anybody's thoughts, anybody's ways that don't go for anything and who like to be themselves and do their thing. So this is the house of freedom. They love freedom. So you will fight for freedom. Uh, especially the freedom of yourself and freedom for others, you love that. And so you're the type who love to see people free. Because this is this the moon in the 11th house. You don't like to see nobody in bondage. And so you like when people be themselves. You like, so that's why you like different people, you like different things, and you get bored quickly, so you like to have fun, and you like to try different things. And you're not the same because you're a whole different pe being. And that's why some people can see you as 
weird or different, so different, but a lot of people love who you are. Some don't because you're weird to them because they don't understand you because you're on a higher level, higher frequency, you're highly intelligent, and also emotionally intuitive. And so this makes you a hunter for, for information. You can be a science, scientist. You can be anything that deals with coming up with new ideas and new thoughts because you, you do that easily. You got a creative mind because you come up with new inventions, uh, new anything. So it's for you to think outside of the box, and this is how you win. So when you got the moon in the 12th house, this is the house of Pisces, the old soul. Your soul pick up on energy from all levels of existence, all planes. So you got to protect your energy, period. You got all the psychic gifts, all the psychic abilities. So you're very sensitive. So you can shut down. You can shut down easily because you're picking up on so many, so much emotions. So you need rest. You need to balance yourself out. So you can be a psychic empath, clairvoyance, clairvoyance, claircognance. You got all the psychic gifts. It's open to you because this is the old soul world that deal with all the energy, all the vibration of, of all the houses. So that being said, you got the moon in the 12th house. You got the Neptune house. The things that you would like, you would like things that's beautiful, loving, caring, and you like the underdogs. You like to help the underdogs because you want to see them achieve. So your love is for some of everybody, especially for the underdogs. And you might even hang with those who are doing bad and who, doing, who ain't doing good. Because it's the moon in the house of Neptune, Pisces. So you're very spiritual. And, and you see everything in energy terms. That's if you into the energy world. But if you're not, on the downside, you're very moody, wild spirit, can't be contained. You're doing all type of stuff, even to the on, on level of being like an animal or a cannibal. Because you don't have no discipline. And you want to do what you want to do. But now, if you're on the upside, the moon... In this house is one of the greatest healers, one of the greatest astrologers and numerologists and the greatest psychists, the greatest mediums, the greater, the greatest in anything that deal with the artistic world, like f photography, uh, filmmakers, uh, creative writings, uh, book authors, writing stories, uh, selling things and hustling a good account account this person because you know how to deal with people you love people you know how to interact with people but you also need time alone so you can be able to channel your energy because when you have time alone you'll be able to get your energy in a good perspective because you deal with energy you stay around people so much that you lose a lot of energy they drain your energy so you need time alone to get yourself right but also you the type who could be a escape artist who, who escaped society escape the world because you want to you don't want to confront what's really going on so watch out for that but you got the moon in this house how you win is through faith you need faith confidence of faith is how you win because when you you got to do the right thing which means integrity and you need faith these are two words uh, integrity and faith is how you win which means doing the right thing no matter what and have faith in yourself. And have faith and stay strong in who you are. Because on the downside, you can be the worst of the worst. So once you understand this, with the moon in the 12th house, you will win. Because you're a very loving person. You're all about unconditional love. And you show your love to everybody, even animals, plants, and everything. Because you deal with energy itself. So these are the sages of the world. These are, you are the, the musicians of the world who love music. You love music, love arts, love culture, love beauty. That I mean, you're some of the most beautiful souls on the planet. So we need people like you to stand strong in your faith and live by integrity with me and doing the right thing no matter what. And so this is how you win through discipline. Also, if you can discipline yourself, this is how you win. So anybody who got moon in the 12th house, the Neptune, the Pisces house, the fish house, you, you deal with the spiritual world and the material world, the physical world. And once you balance that out, you win can't have one without the other you know what i mean you here to bring heaven on earth so this being said is i can't let bring you this light i just did all the houses it gets no realer no realer than this arshay